Coach, I want to ask you about some of your uh, uh, freshman package we saw earlier in the year. Yes. So I see Michael Williams. Yes, sir. Bear Alexander. Yep. Yep. Jane, Jane and, uh, 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 Walker. Walker's yes, out there. Sir. Three true freshmen on third down, the money down. This is Two what I'll your tell you. Guys. This is what I'll tell you. At Georgia, if you are good enough, you're old enough, if that makes sense. So those guys work their tails off to learn our packages. And, um, you know, we want to get those guys opportunities to, to show their talents, you know, and to help them. And it creates quality depth on those guys, you know, transitioning from the beginning of the year to now, you know. I mean, thinking about it going into their 15th game, they're not rookies no more. Those guys have played a lot of snaps, you know. So <laughs> well, I'm going to have you go through some of your players so you can, uh, you can tell us what's good about him, you can tell us what's bad about him, whatever gotcha. you want. All right. Uh, so tell me about Michael Williams and his freshman year. Yeah, Michael, first and foremost, I love him because he's a really hard worker and he's a willing learner. Right. Um, that has helped him tremendously. He's good versus the run. He's a natural pass rush, bend, athletic guy. But those are the things that help him as a player. What does he need to work on? Man, everything, <laughs> you know, um, to that That's point. Cool. Well, here's the reason why. I know. When you become a virtuoso at something, you know, you do it so well that you can't mess it up. And so we aren't to that point yet, right. you know. So there's always different little uh, nicks and knacks and things that we can tweak on it from, hey, let me step – let me step this way because if the running back's over here, I want to be able to do this. Hey, let me do this with my weight. Hey, let me do this. And so we're always tweaking on it, and we're searching for perfection, knowing that we never could, knowing that we never could get there. All right, Nazir Stackhouse. Everyone talks about Jalen Carter, Stack. but Nazir's having quite yeah, a good Yeah, um, I would I would have been lost without Stack this year. Oh, uh, Stack, to me, did a tremendous job on owning the burden of responsibility when, you know, there was a time where Jalen was a little bit unhealthy, um, you know, and he waited his time uh, behind our guys last year. He learned from them. He kept preparing as if he was going to play every play, every down. And now we're seeing the benefits of his workman attitude. Um, you know, it's been great. And then once Jalen was able to come back, those guys were able to mesh and unify and and it just made our depth even better because you got Nas and you got Warren Brinson and uh, Zion Lode, who really did a good job as vets. And then they uh, they were able to bring along Keithy and Alexander, Bear Alexander for those guys as well. Yeah. I was going to kind of jump in older than younger. I'm going to yeah. go back to Bear Alexander. Yeah. Big guy comes in, actually gets in on those third down packages. Yes. Kind of that uh, kind of that inside technique. You know, um, that was a role that was created for him and we felt like in recruiting him that he'd be able to bring value to that. You always want to have at least two or three guys that can do the same thing. And so, you know, when Jalen was unavailable or if Warren Brinson was unavailable or Nas, then Alexander was in position really to be like, hey, I got it next man up. So he took that burden on and it's grown slowly but surely throughout the throughout the, the, the year. But he practices very hard, and it's a situation where he learned how to practice, and he's improved every week over these uh, past 14, 15 weeks on trying to master his uh, technique and fundamentals too. I don't want to butt in on this, right, but yeah. he had to lose 40 pounds to get there, right? Yeah, he did a tremendous job. Saying. He did a tremendous job of coming in, and we got a great nutritionist, Collier Madalino. Um, last January, he came in, guys. He was, you know, maybe 337, 340. And by March or April, he was low 300 pounds. He changed his body. He changed his body fat comp. And that's a testament to his willingness to grind. And it's also a testament to Collier Madalino and her nutrition program, too. So you got another guy that came in a little heavy. Yeah. Talk a bit about Jamal Jarrett. Yeah, man. Big jaw. Uh, you know, <laughs> great kid. We call him Big Jolly. Great kid. I know he's going to be willing to learn and grind uh, the same way that Alexander did just because that's how it's supposed to go. You get one of your bigger bros that's come in and say, you know what, hey, bro, I've been through that. Let me show you the way. Just listen, learn, and you'll be good, you know, to transition from there. Another guy we don't hear people talk about a whole lot is Warren Brinson. Yeah. He's made some big plays as well. Man, uh, I am so excited to see how he continues to develop. 
um, you know, throughout this year. You know, hopefully we can do a good job and, and keep him here for maybe one more year and do that. But he has potential to leave right now if he wanted to. Um, it's just one of those things where he is really self-aware. And so he really is trying to improve at his small technique and fundamentals to make sure he maximizes his value too. You know, so. What can we expect from Ingram stalking this? Oh, you Here. can you can you can expect a really athletic, big defensive end uh, that gives us value out on the edge mm -hmm. and gives us value inside as a rusher as well. Uh, I'm excited to see his progress, and I think between him, Tremel Walthour, and Michael Williams, they've made my job really easy <laughs> because all of them work hard. Yeah. Um, they play the same or similar position, and they're each other's biggest fans. So I'm excited to see him. You know, wrapping up his second year, what he can develop into going into his third year next year. Uh, give me two, uh, two for one. Yeah. Give me uh, Jonathan Jefferson and Sean Washington. Man, I'm looking forward to those guys continuing to develop because they all have talent. Some progress faster than others, and for those two, I'm so excited to see what they bring to the table because they've been men at work just mining <laughs> and honing their skills. I'm really excited to see what they come to. This is going to be a huge spring for both of those guys coming up. Um, I think that's what everybody. Did we miss anybody? Yeah, I think that's the crew. Okay. You uh, hit them. We got, uh, who was the other defensive lineman you signed? Um, Jordan Hall. Jordan Hall. Yeah. Now that guy, we went down to see him in Jacksonville. Yeah. And he was everywhere. We're on, excited on, about on, him. A team that wasn't very good. Yeah. There, there was no lack of effort even in a losing scenario. That about Jordan in itself. Hall. What you just described is everything that I love. The team may not have been the best, but he gave the team his all. He loves those guys. He's a loyal kid. He's a hard worker. You know. How'd that recruitment go down? Because that was a that was a look looked to be tougher. Um, he knew what he wanted, yeah. and you know, um, I thought I, I feel like he found as much of what he needed in University of Georgia, and I'm excited that he trusts us enough to help them develop, you know, but we're really excited about getting them getting them there. You know, so. Now, after the game's over, you'll see uh, Tymo Mitchell cross yeah, the way. Yeah, I love him. I love him. You know, those guys that you go and commit and sit in on their homes and eat their food, uh, he's going to be family no matter what. Yeah. And uh, I'm so proud of him. I love him dearly. I love his dad, his mom. Uh, he's a great kid. I'm so happy for him. Uh Logan. Yeah. We miss Zion Logan. Man, you know, like one of the secret MVPs of our group, quiet leader, strong mindset, um, and Zion cares about the team first. And, uh, you know, it's been great to see his maturation since 2019. And he's really been able to show and grow and, and bring more value to himself really over these past two years. Last year we had three first rounders in, in our room. You know, this year we have another one. Uh, potentially, that can be it. And he, he's right in there. He brings a lot of value to us. You know. So how, when Georgia fans are going to ask, what now when Jalen Carter goes? Yeah. You know. So next Shereen, man up. Yeah. So do you have in your mind like a, a, a blueprint of what you're going to lay out there in the spring? Yeah. You see me smiling right now. Yeah, I don't see you smiling. That's why I'm trying to get it out of you. Oh, um, next man up. Uh, those guys. Uh, you know, the pressure of what Trayvon, Devontae, and Jordan built, and even those before him, Malik Herring, John Ledbetter, David Marshall, you know, John Atkins, those are the guys six years ago that we had here that created a culture here. Those were the guys that I just mentioned that played in the Rose Bowl and that got us to our first national championship. Those guys left a legacy, and they helped me and Kirby develop a culture in our group that puts pressure on the current players to uphold that standard. And if you look up standard definition, it's the quality of something. So those guys have that pressure of making sure the quality continues to stay how it is. So I'm excited about it. I don't know exactly how it's going to look, but I know it's going to look good because <laughs> that's the standard, you know? <laughs> I, got, I got a couple questions. One is, what is it about your room that the personalities seem to come out of it? J.D.? Yeah, uh, uh, man, we, we let them be who they are. Right. You know, uh, that's really important to me. Um, and then within the individual mindset or personality that those guys have, we have a unified goal of 
being the best version of this and that. But we want those guys to be individuals because I feel like, you know, it's just like when you make a good gumbo, you got to have a trinity, <laughs> you know. You got to have some good bell peppers. You got to have some good onions. You got to have some good smoked sausage. So I look at it when we're building a room and developing culture as ingredients within the individual. You know, so it's great. I love them. I love them. I let them, I let them be who they are. I am who I am, and it ends up working, you know.